Put down your pencils, hand in your answers, go get some drinks. Your time's up. Now it's time to really play Fez. Like I said, Fez is a puzzle platformer. So far we've only seen the latter, and that's by my choice. A normal person playing the game would obviously solve puzzles, or at least make an attempt at solving them, as they come across them. Partly because I wanted to give you all a chance to solve them at your own pace, since they aren't required for the 32 cubes, sort of. And partly because I wanted to keep things more relaxed, I made a point of ignoring every puzzle, no matter how obvious. Now the time has come for me to show you the answers, and I'm not going to be slowing down to let you figure them out here. If you'd like to try your hand at solving them yourself, all the information you need to solve most of the puzzles in the game is in the previous videos. So, go back to school, or commune with nature, or study the celestial signs. Whatever you need to do to divine the answers, go for it. And when you're ready, we'll begin. Well, hi there. New Game Plus starts off basically the exact same way as New Game the first time. As you can see, some things are the same and some are not. I think that door that was opened down at the bottom was just a graphical glitch. It was, I think it was supposed to be closed. The point being that even though we have the fares, we're currently stuck in two dimensions. The game has to begin the same way. But first... Still doesn't really answer my question from back in the first video about how they can't believe in multiple sides when there's there are things on the on the other walls of the classroom that chest contains a cube for some reason you can use a now removed glitch to get over to it what's up geezer
Oh, no way. Oh, yes way. By the power of those sweet shades, we can look in the first person and see everything about the world for what it really is. Ah, oh, this is... this is awesome! Man, wonder what else the game's get. Gomez, after everything we did to get the 32 cubes and put the back to first thing you do is Welcome to Pez. Oh, not again. Well, hi there. Man, when you look at it from this point of view, Gomez is tiny. Alrighty then. First we're going to take, tackle all of the really obvious puzzles. It's pretty easy to find, well, every puzzle in the game. You just go to the map, look at a room that has a question mark over it. And there we go. And then you head inside and see what you can see. Usually just a quick look at all four walls will give you the answer. In this case, these eight fellas with fezzes on all have fezzes on particular sides. Right, right, left, right, left, 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 right. I know something that we can do that involves left and right. Oh, ho, ho. what's this? Thirty-two cubes, thirty-two anti-cubes. The regular cubes are gotten through platforming, the anti-cubes are all through puzzles, and they only come in full-sized cubes. Alright, let's get on to the... Oh man, that's a bit of a climb, actually. So while Gomez has a quick snooze... Let me reveal to you... What the... Actual way you want to get around in New Game Plus is. One, two, three, four... Rise! Oh yeah, we can fly. There's a secret power of the shades that is never explained. But it allows you to basically make all of the platforming a trivial matter. I like it because it is the game's way of telling you that the platforming isn't the point anymore. It's now entirely about the puzzles and that's why you would chiefly be using it to get between the fluff and to the actual puzzles.
in the ocean hub, there are two obvious anti-cubes we can pick up. Both off the bell tower. A uh, slight problem of the flight is that it can make you forget where things are. Because the temptation to just immediately fly all over the place can suddenly get you going right to the top when you actually didn't need to go anywhere. Back down here. It makes that noise, but you're okay. This is a very basic puzzle. As you may have guessed, the answer is just to arrange the four blocks such that they make the shapes underneath them on each side. There are two T blocks and two L blocks. It's actually almost easier to do this one in the restrictive perspectives of Fez rather than try to arrange them in actual 3D space. I can't really explain how you pick the blocks up to move them, I'm, but you just have to keep trying it. Keep matching them on every side, and eventually they'll all work out. This was another reason that I wanted to wait until uh, New Game Plus to do any of the puzzles, because I wanted to give all of the platforming an honest chance. If I were to get 32 cubes as quickly as possible, and then have cube bits to pick up, it would... we wouldn't really see how the design is supposed to work out for all of those. I don't know if there's a official name for this room. I call it the, uh, I don't know, the conductor. All of these lines just seem like they would conduct energy of some kind. This is another very, very easy one. It's either one of these two puzzles on the bell tower path are most likely the first anti-cubes a player is going to pick up. You just have to match the lines to each of the holes. There are only four spaces to put them, so it's very hard to get this wrong anyway. I guess they were conducting energy to open the door. Weird pillar of light. 
And let's move on. The next area that we visited was the industrial zone, but there are actually no anti-cubes to pick up in the industrial zone. Let alone obvious puzzles. So instead, our next destination is, of course, the sewers. Now if I can just remember where I'm going... Any second. Nope, wait. Yes, up here. I'm sure many of you correctly identified this as a QR code. Thankfully, Dot was kind enough to get in the way of uh, people scanning it. It's easy to scan in the first person anyway, but when we scan it, we get this very long sequence of turns that we would need to do. But we won't do that just yet. We'll keep a note of this. All right, now we're going in here. Now if I could just remember where the door is in here. But I can't because I don't go into the sewers very often. It always confuses me. Well, there are only three doors, so statistically, I've got pretty good odds of finding the correct door now. So maybe it's this door up here. Nope. I'm very unlucky. Once again, it was down at the bottom, but I was really obsessed with flying. If you have headphones on, you can pretty clearly hear what's going on here. If you don't, I advise you to put headphones on while I go grab something. Be two seconds. Man, why do they ever stop making clear controllers? They're awesome. These two little circular things in the handles of the Xbox 360 controllers are its left and right rumble motors. This was originally developed for the Xbox Live Arcade, and when players played it, they wouldn't be able to listen on headphones, so they didn't get those very clear audio cues, but instead they got a much more apparent uh, sensory indication of what they were supposed to do.
And that's when I realized that the secret doors, now that I think about them, all lead to anti-cube puzzles, or very close to. Which actually makes pretty good sense as a means of fast travel for people who didn't learn about flying. Alright, if we can stop being spooked out for a second. The answer, of course, is to turn all of these skulls to face the same direction. And when we do... We finally still the big one, and get to see what's behind it. Finally, the ruined village. Now if I can just find it, which I've been very good at so far, I'm sure many of you will recall that there was a QR code on one of the walls inside this village. There it is. Again, thankfully, Dot got in the way of a good scan. But, oh, hang on. Let me get a more centered look at that. <clears throat> there we go. And when we scan it, right, right, left, right, left, 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 right. Where have we heard that before? Right, right, left, right, left, 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 right. Oh yeah! So there's only one anti-cube shared between these two rooms. The QR code is... well, it's a shortcut, basically. It's theoretically easier to solve it using the QR code, at least if you have something that can scan them. And if you don't, then you just have to figure out the painting. It can be a bit weird if you solve it with the QR code and then go into the painting room expecting there to be another secret because the map says so and then suddenly the border turns gold after you step foot in there. I'm not sure if that was patched since release but it was a bit weird back then. This is probably one of the hardest puzzles in the game, because it's hard to figure out exactly what you're expected to do here. Obviously we need to arrange the blocks in some sort of manner, and there are these patterns on the wall. And when you get a proper look at them, it should hopefully become quickly apparent that these are all cube maps. If you fold the squares in on themselves, they form cubes. But there are only 10 cube maps here, while there are 11 in total, as far as I'm aware. So we have to make the 11th. And it might take a little bit to figure out how to do it if you don't look it up. But fortunately, my helpful guide with a piece of paper that was folded too many times beforehand will show you how it's done. Mm -hmm. 
Ba bam. A lot of people I've found will solve many of the puzzles in the game, even some of the harder ones, and still not figure out that one puzzle. Lastly, there's our good old friend, where is he? The clock tower, there he is. Now you probably all noticed that I was quick to rush through here. My excuse at the time was that there was a cube there. The real reason is that I wanted to avoid you seeing this. Yes, there are four different clock faces, and each of them move at different times. When each of the hands gets to the top of their respective face, an anti-cube will spawn until it moves away from it. The red one is the easiest to find, it appears once every minute, the blue appears once every hour, the green appears once every 24 hours, and the white appears once a week. Which means that when I recorded this, I got very, very lucky, and I didn't have to change my system clock settings to cheat my way to the cube, which is what about 99.9% .9 of players did when they got this, because it's not actually set to a standard time amongst all uh, copies of the game. It's set basically when you create your save file, as far as I know. In any case, it's different for every player. So I guess now I have to pass some time. It should take about mm, maybe 90 more minutes for the white hand to hit the 12. Fortunately, that should also get me the blue cube as well. When we come back, I'm sure I'll have picked up all three of these extra anti-cubes. Until then, let's all be lulled to sleep by ticking and the shifting of stone. Ah, soothing.